Hello, I'm the Amazing Atheist, and today we're going to be talking about pedophilia in Christianity. Now, I don't want our Muslim friends to feel left out. Tomorrow's video will be pedophilia in Islam. Now, a lot of uh, people's minds probably immediately go to the example of the Catholic Church and their boy-fucking scandal. Um, now, I want to point out that the Catholic Church actually did not have a much higher instance of pedophilia than any other organization that works with children, such as, I don't know, um, the public school system, or the Boy Scouts, or things of that nature. Uh, the real problem was not that the instances of pedophilia were way drastically higher. The real problem was that the Catholic Church itself covered up these actions. Like if they discovered that, you know, Father McElroy is diddling boys behind the confessional, they don't disband him and notify the police. They move him to another parish where people are none the wiser and thus allow him to continue his boy-fucking exploits. But I don't want to get too much into contemporary examples. What I'd really like to focus on is the instances of pedophilia in the Bible, such as in Numbers chapter 31, where Moses orders his troops to kill all the Midianites. He says, uh, that's an enemy tribe of the ancient Israelites, by the way, the Midianites. He says, kill all the Midianites, kill the men, kill the women, kill the children, but you can spare the virgin girls. Those you can keep for yourselves. You know, I think I know what they had planned for those girls. Uh, later on, the girls were described as captives. Captives. So, basically, you slaughter her entire family, and then you take her on as your sex slave. Isn't that beautiful? But don't worry, there was some morality involved. After you slaughter the girl's family and you take her as your sex slave, she has to undergo a purification ritual which involves shaving her head and allowing her to mourn. And uh, if, even after this period of mourning, she is not able to have sex with you because, you know, you traumatized her and ruined her life and slaughtered her family like dogs, then uh, you, can, you, you have to let her go. You have to let her go. You have to say you're free. So yeah, uh, a girl that has no family and you've shaved her head and taken her prisoner and... Uh, put her through uh, massive trauma. You can now let her loose in the world. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm sure she'll be fine. Uh, in Exodus, God bestows uh, upon us the rules for selling your daughter as a sex slave. Uh, this is the law as approved by God. When a man sells his daughter as a slave, she will not be freed at the end of six years as men are. If she does not please the man who bought her, he may allow her to be bought back again, but he is not allowed to sell her to foreigners since he is the one who broke the contract with her. And if the slave girl's owner arranges for her to marry his son, he may no longer treat her as a slave girl, but he must treat her as a daughter. If he himself marries her and then takes another wife, he may not reduce her food or clothing or fail to sleep with her as his wife. If he fails in any of these three ways, she may leave as a free woman without making any payment. The best you can really say about a system like that is that it's not as incredibly evil as it could be. So uh, this video is about pedophilia, so you might be asking, what's the cutoff age for this? Well, uh, there's no cutoff age prescribed in the Bible, but we know that marrying off young girls was not uncommon in those times in that region. Most girls in biblical times and regions were betrothed before they reached puberty, and marriage was consummated once puberty was reached. So even if the Bible does not explicitly condone fucking nine-year-olds, let's think about this for a second. This was common practice among God's people at the time that the Bible was written. And yet God makes no mention of it. God, tell, God gives them all sorts of, of stupid, outrageous rules like, you know, don't eat shellfish, don't eat pigs, don't plant wheat and barley in the same furrow, don't wear mixed fabrics, but nowhere does he mention, hey, guys, don't fuck nine-year-olds. Look, if you live in a society where fucking nine-year-olds is rampant and it's socially accepted and your God does nothing to condemn it, then you have to believe that God just didn't care. God didn't mind. In fact... In the Bible, God provides rules about how you can go about doing this. So if you're a Christian or you're a Jew and you are against pedophilia as all good moral people are, then I would say that that is a secular moral. That is a moral that you got by actually using empathy, by using rational cognition, and it has nothing to do with the Bible, the book that you claim to be the source of all morality. So I have to ask you, if God got that wrong, what else did he get wrong? Could it be everything? I'm the Amazing Atheist. Peace. The fuck out. And if you want to see me review Left Behind, starring Nicolas Cage, a piece of Christian propaganda filmmaking, then sign up for a free audiobook through Audible. I have a link right down below where you can sign up. You can get a free audiobook, tons of free audiobooks that you can get, and uh, you can cancel your membership at any time. The first 30 days are absolutely free. Check it out. It's a great service. I use it myself, and you can get me to watch and review this piece of shit. Gotta be honest with you. I'm kind of dreading it.